previously on Taken. Flying saucers. My father and I have both seen them. We've both been inside them. Your daddy's big, important secret job is to figure out if we're being attacked by Martians. You're drunk, Anne. You shouldn't take the car out when you're drunk. Owen Crawford. This guy broke her heart. My life is not going to be complete until I ruin his. I need proof that there's a clear and present danger. I need a smoking gun, gentlemen. My father's in your hospital. Doctors say it's a tumor they can't operate on. Exactly the same size in exactly the same place. I have an identical tumor in my own head. What are the odds? It could be, for example, something as simple as a tracking device that allows them to know where the test subjects that are most important to them are. You can have mine. We would never do anything to harm a private citizen. <laughs> we would never do anything to a citizen against his will. <laughs> I personally would never do anything to harm a child. Where's my father? I want to see my father! Thank you for volunteering to help your country again. What makes us human? That we can think? That we can feel sorrow and pain? Maybe. That we can laugh? I hope so. We can hurt and we can laugh and we know a past and a present. And in some ways, a future. Maybe what makes us human is that we know just enough to think we know where we're going. Wow. This could be big. Oh, we get these reports two, three times a week. Mutilated cattle, dancing lights, the sort of thing we're about to take a look at. But for you to come personally here, you must have some reason. The reports look good. First one came in from a local pilot out of Gary, then a commercial airline en route to Chicago. This could finally be your proof, Dad. What I mean is that this could finally show that the threat is real. We already know that, don't we? Don't try so hard, kid. Just do a good job. Your old man will come around. Keep these people back! Come back! Come back, Reports are all good, Bob. This is real. It's a landing strip, Bob. Stick my career on it. 
Yes, 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 you can tell that to the president. And you can tell him that I believe it signals that our friends will soon be here in force. I really think you should look at this personally. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. The president's on his way. That's great news. Why don't you, uh, go help out with crowd control or something? before here and in France, England and Germany, but the scale of this, the intent. Look at the formations, like a runway. Like a landing strip? If it's a landing strip, then that means that they, they could be landing. You think Nixon stands a chance at a second term? In my opinion, you have to fix the next election. No one likes a little creep. Truman was president when I started this project. I've survived four of them. Nixon will make five. I've lasted this long because I know how to ruin the people who get in my way. Now what I want one of you puppies to do is to get on the phone and make the president know that he has to be here immediately. That this is a threat to our country of unparalleled proportions. You do that for me because long after Richard Nixon is just a faded memory, I'll be around to make your lives a living hell. Looks like there's another one over here. Dr. Powell, we've got some. Very nice, Buzz. It's in remarkable condition. Where'd you find it? North 6, West 12. That's where we found the drums, right? And there's more. Well, let's go check it out. Do you think we could be onto a smoke hut? Something the shaman used to drive out evil spirits? Yeah, possibly. Sarah's back on the demons again, Dr. Powell. That's why we came out here in the first place, isn't it? Rumors of demons in the woods. The places that the Russian settlers wouldn't go. Places that people still won't go. Well, yeah, that and 80 years of research into the Chim Chim people. Dr. Powell. Yeah, what's up, Daryl? 
I found something. I don't think it's a smoke hut, Sarah. It looks to me more like a funeral potlatch. The drums, the bowls, the raven that take the spirit into the next world. We're all dead. First there's a demons. Then we open up a tomb with hopes. Mommy, Dr. Powell, what were these demons supposed to be doing? Well, Buzz, they're a native version of the legend of the incubus and the succubus. They would take people from their homes, take them to the work, and sometimes a woman would come back pregnant. Sometimes? They don't come back at all. Daryl, you okay? Oh, I'm hurt, man. Buzz, grab a ladder. How you doing, buddy? Oh, I landed bad. I twisted my ankle. It's all right. We'll get you out. Don't worry. Yes. Twenty-three years. What are you going to do? Learn to fly fish. For what it's worth, I think you got a raw deal. I tell my doctor I'm worried about my heart, my blood pressure. Tells me to take these pills and to go fly fishing. Apparently, there's something soothing about catching a fish on a hook, looking at them, then letting them go. What about Jesse Keys? My smoking gun. Sixteen-year-old boy with something put in his head by our friends. You and I both know we're never going to find him. Disappeared from that bomb shelter and fell off the planet. Something, Marty. I've never really known what our friends were up to. Not a clue. Roswell taking all these people. But the way they took Jesse Keys. Whatever they're doing, we don't stand a damn chance against them. Is there something else? Just wondering where to put the desk. They didn't want to go outside the project. They put me in charge. <laughs> Great. And you can look for Jesse Keys. I asked my dad once about his dad, my grandfather. I knew he'd had some hard times, but I didn't know a lot more than that. I said to my dad, I guess maybe he was kind of lost. Not lost, really, my dad said. But for a while, he was definitely bewildered. Hey, Mr. Spaceman, won't you please take me along? I won't do anything wrong. Hey.
You waste our friggin' time and money going to the moon. You know what I always admired about you? Back when we were over there? I was in four different units while I was in NAM. And you were the only one. What do you mean, only one? Officer who walked point. Every single mission, you walked point. <laughs> At first, I thought it was just because you was crazy. <laughs> but then maybe because you were the, the best guy in the whole world. Or maybe because you'd seen something that was something other than that ring of hell that we were in. It was because I was the best guy in the world. <laughs> See, now me, now I believe in everything. You tell me there's aliens or that you've gone for a ride on a saucer, <laughs> sure, why not? You tell me they killed the Kennedys or started the war and I am with you 100%. What I'm sorry to hear is, is that your experience was so bad that you could do what we did without even flinching. I don't know what my experience was. All I know is my whole life was like that. <sighs> Walking point through a jungle, waiting for something that I can't stop to happen to me. No disrespect. But how does that make you any different than anybody else? How's my credit? Sorry, but there's nothing I can do in that regard. Willie, I saved your life. Come on. Two times. Now I'm gonna save yours. Get straight. I don't want to get straight, Willie. I want to get high. I oh, know you want to get taken to that other world. Well, that costs money. No, I'm good for it. <laughs> You're not good for nothing. Same as every other junkie I do business with. No, that is why I am strictly cash and carry. Get straight. And I'd be happy never to see your face ever again. If you get some money, then I'd be happy to accommodate you. expecting a telegram. From Los Angeles, California? But tell me again, doesn't make get here any quicker. You're the people that are digging in the woods, aren't you? Yeah. What are you looking for? Well, do you know about the Indians that used to live out here? A little bit. We're trying to find out more about them. Five even. Gonna be getting the hell out of there anytime soon? Why are you people so hostile? We're not doing anything. You got a home with a backyard? Yeah, the backyard, yeah. Go outside. People digging potholes all over the yard. Maybe digging up things that are better left buried. How are you gonna feel about it? Oh. Thanks. shortly after 10 o'clock Eastern Time last night. Something happened which cut off the power and oxygen supply in the command ship. At midnight, the astronauts were told to use the moon landing ship. At 3.42 a.m., they were ordered to make the critical firing to put the mission in an orbit. That you think this was an accident? Get back to Earth. That firing was if I had to weigh our friend's top propensity top to interfere against NASA's space. growing incompetence, before, I think I'd have to go with NASA. The astronauts made their last television broadcast to Earth. What? If you were still in charge, you would have used this as further proof of that imminent invasion. Probably. Probably. 
Sam. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Surprise. Said he lost his job. Right, like you care about that. What do you want, Sam? How's Julie? She's pregnant. What do you want? Pregnant? Well, congratulations. You just came home to gloat, didn't you? You came home because he lost the organization. You still think he's some sort of a god, don't you? I mean, he craps on you for 21 years and you just keep coming back for more. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about lies, Eric. I'm talking about this. A guy named Tom Clark says he devoted his life to exposing the government UFO hoax. You know, people see something strange in the sky, and the government makes them think it's a UFO, not some secret plane. People are taken from their homes in the middle of the night and filled full of mind-altering drugs. You know, it must have been cosmic visitors, because it sure as hell wasn't our government testing out some new chemical weapon. I mean, is that our legacy, Eric? Is that what he's been doing all these years, covering for these creeps? What creeps? Tom Clark, I should have known. You know him? Our paths have crossed. I spent a lifetime building my organization with one prank he took it away from me. It wasn't the prank. It's the times. Nobody cares about the science fiction stuff, Dad. We've got real monsters on this planet running this country, killing innocent people. All right, son. There were no monsters in my generation. No killing. You're my son. This is your inheritance, he told I don't want any part of that. Then why did you come home? I was just asking him the same question. If you don't give a damn about me, why did you come home? Are you really in charge of some UFO project? No. Absolutely not. I guess it could have changed the combination. I wish that when you were ready, you'd come home. I found this at a crash site in New Mexico. What crashed was nothing man-made. Inside this craft were five beings. They were not human. 
Three of them were dead. The fourth one died under observation in the fifth. Everything I've done since the moment I found this wreckage has been about this, about trying to understand who they are and what they wanted. I was wrong about the crop circle saying, but I'm not wrong about this. Something is about to happen. Maybe next week, maybe in 30 years, these visitors, they're moving towards something. It's really true, isn't it? Dad, you had no right to hide the truth like that. You would know what would have happened in 1947 if the country had believed we were about to be attacked from outer space. Oh, I don't know. The growth of the military-industrial complex? Senate hearings to determine if you were or ever had been an alien sympathizer. You know, maybe we would have uh, started to invade countries we already thought succumbed to the men. a mess. And what about now? I mean, you've kept this from the world for 23 years, Dad. Don't you think it's time you told the truth? I've only been frightened once in my adult life. Would you like me to tell you about that time? That fifth one, survivor of the crash that was never accounted for. I tracked him down to a small town in Texas. He had formed a bond there with a young woman. And years later, I went back to that town. The woman was not that young then. It she had two grown children, and she also had a 10-year-old son, the result of her bond with this stranger. Her older son, Tom, is the one who made that crop circle sound. He did it deliberately to destroy me. Well, I guess he had his reasons. I got close to the clerks. I wanted to know more about the younger boy, Jacob. I was bringing him back to the ranch when it happened. Strange boy. He was gentle and he was withdrawn. When I looked in this boy's eyes, Sam, when I saw them, I saw there was all my memories and all my fears. More than that, I saw them add up, you understand? I saw my own death, Sam. I saw how I would die. Maybe it was a moment of guilt. You know, maybe what you saw is what you know you deserve. <laughs> well, there's your story, son. Your big scoop of Pulitzer while you're still an undergraduate. And all you have to do is make someone believe you. Ah, do you know where I can find some information on the dig site? Yeah, I do. Who are you? Oh, Sam Crawford. Sarah. How you doing? I'm a journalism student from UC Berkeley. 
Uh, Dr. Powell? This is Sam Crawford. He's a journalism student. Hi. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Uh, is that the carbon dating report? Yeah. Well, how old's her body? Oh, it's about six years old, give or take. Yeah, the, uh, wrappings of bedsheets. They date back to the early 1960s. My best to me, it's 1964, but they can't tell for sure. We should have known. There's nothing chim about the burial. They never wrapped their dead. The glyphs on the wall were indecipherable. Not their language at all. Actually, I was, I was hoping I could talk to you about that. What did you guys make of the writings you found in the burial chamber? Well, there's no language that we've been able to identify. Yeah, probably no more real than our mummy. Look, I gotta go find the sheriff. Sam, you're welcome to stick around if you want. Thanks. I remember my mom telling me that she only went to church once with her mother on Easter Sunday. When the minister said that the kingdom of heaven was within her, that scared her half to death. It meant it was all up to her. People want the comfort of strong arms. They look to the voices in their heads, to drugs. They look to the sky. Hey. Hey. I could see you didn't take my advice about getting clean. It's off to say to myself, maybe the man's got some money. I got these. What are they? Yeah, my dad's medals. What the hell are you doing? Get a doctor. Right away. I want you people packed up and out of here by tomorrow morning. Sheriff, we've got to be able to come to some sort of compromise. This is a significant archaeological dig. I don't care. I want you gone. Or's the mummy? Oh, can I ask you something? Now, you say this mummy might be evidence of a murder, right? Well, that's generally the case when somebody hides the body, yeah. Well, then aren't you supposed to say, don't leave town? instead of get out of town by sunrise? You find that helps you as you make your way through life? Being a wise ass? Hey, Dr. Powell. The mummy was here just a minute ago. Well, it didn't just get up and walk off by itself, now did it? Hey, look at this. Mosquitoes starting early this year, huh, George? Mm -hmm. You know, I read somewhere that mosquitoes have killed more people in the history of the world. Yeah, they spread disease and all. And all the wars, famines, and floods put together. You try to do something like that, huh?
You know what I like to do for mosquitoes? I like to get garlic and motor oil and rub it all over any part of me that's going to be exposed. I never have any trouble with little blood suckers. Bye, Louise. Honey, would you put... Wendy? Wendy? She knows not to go in the woods. She has been told and she has been told. Louise, it's gonna be all right. Kids wander off all the time. We find them. Not in these woods. They walk among us in many shapes, and their ways are not always what we would hope. So to understand that which is not you, you must become that other thing. My grandmother always used to say, walk a mile in another man's shoes. That is the greatest secret to shape-shifting. So it's not about the disguise. It's about knowledge. You guys really gonna leave in the morning? No, yeah, well, we really don't have much of a choice. It's a good dig, sir. Even without the body, you've done some important work here. Yeah, we were only just getting started. You really want to take a look at the writing on the wall, don't you? Yeah, let's go. Daryl, you want to join us? Okay. You sure you want to do this? I'm not a virgin if that's what you mean. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying you sure you want to wander off into the deep, dark woods when there's something out there? What do you think happened? Tana leaves. The curse. He's been revived. He's coming for you, Sarah. Cut it out. That's not funny. <laughs> Dr. Powell, was the Raven considered a trickster or a shapeshifter? Well, Daryl, are you looking for a grade here, or do you really want to know? A little bit of both. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Trickster is both good and bad. He brings man knowledge of the universe as it is. Do you understand that? Okay, so Jack Tails and Loki and Daffy Duck, these are all examples of trickster guys. I mean, what could be trickier than shapeshifting, right? Oh, right, like when, uh, when Daffy pretended to be a skunk. That was Sylvester, and I think paint spilled on his back, but yeah, you, you get the point. Wow. You sure that wasn't Daffy? Because the duck, man, he's, he's always getting into something. I get the feeling that this all means something to you. <laughs> Stay here and watch your stuff. Where are they? Check up here. Oh, you want to get that light out of my face? Sorry. These two belong to you? Yeah. You okay? She's fine. But if you're going to be so jumpy, you scream in the face of every old man you meet, you shouldn't be walking in the woods in the middle of the night, that's all. Trickster. The trickster.
I was just messing around, man. Hello? Buzz? This isn't funny, man. How are you feeling today, Frank? Better. Feeling better. Miss, Miss, I got this itch that really needs scratching. You slept through the night. First time. I know. Thought you might be up for some solid food. I've got something solid right here. Looks like Johnson's hungry. Hungry? Ah! <laughs> no, no. Do they still have those guys in the park who like, sell hot dogs? Sheriff, Daryl's vanished. He's been gone all night. Is he a citizen of Haysport? No, he's not. So his disappearance is not my problem. What do you mean it's not your problem? Who are you? I'm Sam Crawford. I'm a reporter. I'm here doing a story on the dig. Not anymore, you're not. Look, Sheriff, last night there was an old man. Old man? Yeah, prowling the woods with a shotgun. Now one of my students has disappeared, and you're telling me that you're not going to do a thing about it? Tell you what. You file a report, I'll keep my eyes open. Starting again, Kirby, isn't it? When you're a kid, anything can take you away. Soap bubbles, or a hose spraying a rainbow up over a new mowed lawn. I guess growing up means that it gets harder and harder to find your way back to that kind of place where you can be taken. One time I see grown-ups with that same sort of look on their faces. It's when they're first falling in love. Changed a lot while you were away, huh? I wasn't really thinking about that. I was just thinking about all those bubbles. It's kind of beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, these guys look really happy. What happened? A lot of things. In the war? I don't know. I was just icing on my cake. It's not my war. Come on. Come on. Oh, man can't make a damn bubble in the modern world. Come on, it's okay. Frank. Frank. Hey, hey, hey. It's okay. You can tell me. 
you meeting Samelia for God's sake? I was named after somebody who was lost. Can I ask you to do something for me? Would you call me Jesse instead of Frank? Frank's not my real name. Maybe someday I can explain. Excuse me, miss. I'm looking for Lieutenant Frank Pierce. Ridley, Personnel Services Office, Records Branch. You're a difficult man to find. Yeah, I've been uh, sort of uh, preoccupied. You never picked up your medals. I have a bronze star and a purple heart. Keep them. Excuse me? Give them to someone who deserves them. You don't want them? I don't want them. Okay. I read the report on this, Lieutenant. What you did, it's a miracle you survived. The temple was on fire, you couldn't get everyone out. I don't know if you blame yourself for the men you couldn't save, if that's what this is all about. It's about that and a lot of other things. I'm not gonna take your medals. Add that to the list. The list of things you're going to explain to me someday. Like it? Being a nurse? When I was in college, you know, everything that was wrong with the world, I wasn't doing one little thing to make it better. What about you? Did you always want to be a soldier? Uh, I always figured I'd be a mechanic like my dad. What happened? Uh, different in that way. I stopped thinking I could fix things. You okay, buddy? Steve! Oh, you little idiot. What were you doing? Why don't you think? You don't ma think. Ma'am, ma I think he's scared enough already. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, you okay? Yeah. Very brave. No, I'm not. It's not brave when you know nothing can hurt you. What do you mean? Someone's watching over you. You got a guardian angel or something? Or something. Is that what happened in Vietnam, Jesse? You, you, you thought you couldn't get hurt? No. I knew I couldn't get hurt. We were in the, uh, Quang Nai province, and... We walked into a trap, knowing what I knew, knowing that I was safe. I should have been able to do more. I was daring them the whole time, saying, go ahead, get me out of this one. And they did. They got me out. And they let 27 men from my unit die. Who are they, Jesse? Who are you talking about? Add that to your list, huh? Okay, guys. The only way to cover enough ground before nightfall is to split up. Any problems, blow your whistles. Keep blowing until uh, the rest of us can get to where you are, all right? Sam's offered to help us look. One more thing. Someone has to stay here just in case Daryl comes back while we're out looking for him. I will. Thanks, sir. Keep looking. You might want to keep this. Right. Let's go, you guys. Be safe.
Hello? Is anybody there? You in there? Hello? Nobody's been back. This is deeply creepy. Yeah, deeply. Look, I better go back out. You want to take this? You should keep it. Take care of the problem. Yeah. He just got in a pile when I came on him. I shot him twice. No body. There was blood all over the ground. I figured he'd crawl away to die. Well, you figure, or you hope. 
Come on, Doc. I told you I shot him twice. You didn't really want to go make sure just in case you were wrong. What are you looking at, old man? You ain't helping matters creeping around the woods like that. You're damn lucky you're still alive. I need some help. Somebody help me. Please. Shock. Nothing more. She probably won't remember a thing, Kirby. Well, let's hope not, huh? What's going on here, Sheriff? What paper did you say you worked for again? Well, it's the college newspaper. Uh-huh. Well, <coughs> next time an officer of the law makes a suggestion to you, like go away, for example, you should think about listening. If I see you again, I'm going to drive you up into the woods and I'm going to shoot you. Go away. His eyes. He came through the burial chamber. His eyes. Oh, God. His eyes.
You're all right. When I found you, I thought you might be dead. Then I noticed you were still breathing, so I, I dragged you in here to keep you out of the elements and such. Who the hell are you? My name's Leo. My daughter's name was Nadine. She would have been 40 this year. We got the northern lights up here. But in 1958, there was something in the sky that wasn't any aurora borealis. There were these lights in the sky, dancing, moving in ways you wouldn't believe, coming down out of the sky and disappearing into the woods. My Nadine went walking in there, trying to see what they were. She came back a day and a half later. No idea where she'd been. No idea what had happened to her. It was about four months after that she started to show. The twins were born in early 59. The pregnancy was hard, real hard, and the birth killed her. I was Nadine's only family, so I took the boys. I named them Mary and Esther. They were all wrong, those boys, right from the start. But it wasn't just that. It was how they looked and, and what they could do. They had a way of peering inside a fella even when they were small. When I looked in this boy's eyes, Sam, when I saw it, I saw it with all my memories and all my fears. After a little while, it got too hard for us to stay in town. Folks just didn't want them around, so we went out into the woods. Stayed in this cabin my father had built for hunting trips. How much you tell him, Leo? Well, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna take that drive, I promised you. Twins, didn't you? You killed him, then you wrapped him up and stuck him in that burial chamber. Larry. He was the worst of the two. Took to trying out his abilities when he was 16 years old. Leo mentioned that? Hmm? All the dead dogs and cattle? Things he did to them hunters in the woods. This town makes its living off the hunting season. Close to 10 years, we couldn't pay folks to go in our woods. Now, Leo wouldn't go near that cabin himself. My job to keep this town safe for everybody. That boy was a menace. Go on up there, try to talk some sense into him. Anyway, I didn't wrap him up. I buried him under a tree. How we wound up in that burial pit, wrapped up like that. I got some ideas. <laughs>
Where'd he go? This way. Can you come with me? Nice to Kirby. My dad is still missing and we know who's responsible. All right, let's go. She's hurt bad. Must have tried to climb a tree to see where she was and she fell. Her legs broke in a couple of places. I sneak up when she's asleep, leave her food and water, but I can't get her into town. I'm afraid she'll look at me. What happens when people look at you? I don't know exactly. When my brother and I were kids. We used to just scare folks mostly. I think people look at us. They see too much. All the memories. All the fears. I guess you could say. Why'd you wrap your brother up like that? My brother and I, sometimes we would draw in this weird language. We never knew what it meant, but it looked kind of like in books and stuff about ancient Egypt. Yes. I knew it was important, like maybe magic or something. I thought maybe if I wrapped him up like that, put him somewhere special with that writing all around him... Maybe he'd come back to life. Kind of foolish, huh? No. No, Lester, I don't think that's foolish at all. I think you loved your brother very much. I never meant to hurt any of those people who dug up the grave. I was just trying to get help for the little girl. I know. Maya. Whatever it is I do to people. I guess it got stronger after Larry died. I really never meant for anyone to get hurt. Ugh. You're hurt too. I gotta get you both to a doctor. Just worry about the little girl. Hi. Hi. Are you the one who's been bringing me food? No, sweetheart, I'm not. Is that him over there? I want to say thanks. His name's Lester. You can thank him later, okay? Right now, I'm going to have to pick you up. But it might hurt a little bit, so can you be brave? <laughs> Get her back to the car, Louise. We're gonna finish this once and for all. 
Why don't you let me take it from here? Eric. What are you doing here, Eric? You're not a hard man to follow, Sam. From everything the sheriff and Dr. Schilling have been telling me, you've got something here that's important to the project. Some sort of half-breed or something. That's why you're here. I'm here to keep you from doing anything unfortunate. The sheriff tells me you've been less than cooperative with him. Look, there's nothing here for you. I think I'd like to see for myself. Eric, you can't go in there. You're going to stop me? You could be killed. You care about me, Sam, untouched. He's right, son. You don't want to go in there. Eric, no! Get your hands off me! Look, I'm not gonna let you take him. Lester, don't want to hurt anybody. You all get out of here before something happens. Step away from the porch, Leo. Mommy, are they gonna hurt Lester? We're gonna put Lester out of his misery. I let you people take my boys before. And look where it got me. No, sir. I'm not moving. Well, suit yourself. Come on! You want him now, little brother? He's all yours. Lester, you gotta get out of here! Larry didn't mean to hurt anyone either. They came out with cameras, take pictures of the freaks. Larry just lost his temper. We gotta go! What's the point? Where am I gonna go? We'll figure something out! Come on! You better get out of Listen, here! Come on! <gasps> Grandpa did that, didn't he? Oh. I'm very cute. You're very cute. I'm Mary. I'm Mary. Come on, Mary. Can you say Grandpa? Can you say Grandpa? You say Grandpa. She's only a week old. You can't start indoctrinating them too soon. Come on, Mary. Grandpa. <laughs> Tell me, Grandpa. <laughs> I wish your brother Sam was here to see this. Say, Grandpa.
breakfast in the kitchen. Uh, the master bedroom, please. Thank you. Thank you. Shut the door on your way out. 